morning, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to Inget Zoom Series 19. Today, our guest is Professor Dr. Ben Agul Pekar, uh, a dear friend, a very noted friend, and uh, an outstanding colleague. Uh, we are all excited to listen to her here. You all know her perfectly well. I know that. But I still want to give brief information. Professor Dr. Ben Agul Pekar uh, works, currently works at Gazi University. She has been involved in the curriculum and coursebook writing for the Ministry of Education. She was a plenary speaker at the 14th uh, Ayatafel Convention in 2006, and she has presented nationally and internationally. She's a certified NLP trainer. Her professional interest areas are educational change, uh, teacher empowerment, EFL methodology, NLP, and drama. Well, uh, this evening, her topic is, her title is Chaco and Zarife, Understanding and Engaging in Compassionate uh, Communication. Ben Aojam, thank you very much for accepting to be our guest speaker. Welcome. And the screen is yours. Okay. Good evening. My topic is uh, compassionate communication. What do you know about compassionate communication? Uh, Hojam, may I ask for something? Uh, could, you, uh, could you please turn your volume down? What a stupid question. What kind of a question is this? Allah Allah. Any, any other silly, more silly questions like this? Benawajam, come on. Don't insult I, yani, I have seen so many audiences. These audiences were a lot better. I'm leaving. Bye. Oh, come on, Ben Aujam, don't do like that. Shake up them, shake up them, shake up them. <laughs> okay, well, a very warm welcome to all of you. I'm very happy to be with you here uh, this evening. And I would like to thank Aydan Ojam uh, for organizing this event. Uh, Aydan Ojam and I go back a long way. She has been my head of department, a colleague, co-author, uh, sister in arms. We go back a long way. Thank you very much, Aida Najam. And I would also like to thank you uh, for uh, sparing the time and effort to be here tonight, this evening. Let's give ourselves a stretch. Oh, yes, that's very good. Okay. Now, my, my topic is uh, Chaco and Zarife, understanding and engaging in compassionate communication. And I'm sh I, you can see the PowerPoint, I think. Here's my uh, email. You can always contact me uh, via email. Uh, what I'm planning to do tonight or this evening is, first of all, I started with a very nasty introduction, didn't I? And I will talk about this introduction and I will say why I started like this in a minute. Okay, I will talk about two aspects of um, compassionate communication, uh, CC. The first one is understanding hurtful communication. And then we can understand compassionate communication. And the second aspect of CC that I want to bless you, Nazan, bless you, darling. <laughs> Um, hurtful, <laughs> hurtful communication me up to say allergy up to galiba allergy up to okay um, engaging in a CC is done by a four step procedure uh, this is one model in NLP there are other models as well uh, you are most welcome to uh, investigate those models they are also very rich models. Okay, I think we're all aware of our impact in the classroom. We can make a child's life miserable or joyous, or we can do both. We can do both. 
we are so powerful. So how can we make a child's life miserable in the words of Haim Ginot, who was a, a, a clinical psychologist, a child educator, parent educator? Um, how can we make a child's life miserable by hurtful communication? And how can we uh, make a child's life joyous by compassionate communication? So I am, uh, this is from his book, a book for parents and teachers, an invaluable source. So, compassionate, compassionate communication, dear, right? So, what is compassionate communication? It is our nature to enjoy. Well, hang on, I can't see what is written. Okay. To enjoy giving and receiving compassionately. Now, is that surprising for you? It is our nature. I thought we were all depraved by nature. I thought we were evil, evil, devilish human beings. Huh? Maybe? We don't know. Okay. Um, receiving and giving. That is the key word there. If you want to uh, take part in any act of communication, when you make a judgment, like I did at the beginning, silly question, stupid, you are delving into a world of rightness and wrongness. The teacher, I am right and you are wrong. Now you can coerce the student in, into doing what you want, but he will do that out of guilt, shame, and fear, which is not what you want. In any act of communication, the best way to enjoy, uh, or as teachers to make a, a children's life joyous, is to engage in communication that reveals our true nature. I've spent years and years of saying, yes, that's right. And I have never, in those years, I've never been able to speak my true self. How does that make you feel? Just think for a minute. When you are expressing yourself with all your feelings and needs, then you are what Rosenberg calls alive. So I missed many opportunities to be alive because I said yes to what everyone said and I wasn't able to express my true self. So in short, that's um, for compassionate communication. Now Rosenberg uses puppets, two puppets, to uh, explain uh, hurtful communication and compassionate communication. He uses the puppet uh, of a jackal. And as you know, a jackal is by character a bit, he's a scavenger, he's opportunist. Um, and he uses the other puppet, he uses a giraffe. And do you know why he uses a giraffe? Because a giraffe has the biggest heart among all animals. Did you know that? Okay, so my jackal, I don't know if it's true, but if he says, Here's my chuckle. Yay! <laughs> it's lovely. Yay! Chuckle. We have chuckle, dear me. Chuckle, chuckle, both you. And also we have a zarife. <laughs> and here's our zarife. Get lost. Get lost. Chuckle is two chuckle. Chuckle and zarife. So what about them? Uh, can we look at their language and see? what is hurtful in their language. What do you think the kind of language that Chaco uses is? What kind of language does he use? Judgment. He uses all of these. He compares, he blames, he threats. Sh Sorry, you talk too much. Okay, fine. Right, comparison. What did I say uh, in my nasty introduction? I said, I have seen better audiences. Demon. I was comparing. Buna hep yapıyoruz, ne kadar acı bir şey. Komşunun çocuğu. Kerem is so successful. You're talking to your children. Why aren't you that successful? Hocam, You're I'm sorry. I'm Sibosh, are you there? 
Yes, I'm here. It's just my hair doesn't look nice, so I turned it off. <laughs> sorry. Um, excuse Although, me. Because you look great. I'm uh, sorry, Sibel Ocham. I'm sorry. Uh, guys, please <laughs> do not unmute yourselves until Ben Ahoja finishes. Because Chaco, if we bak, continue... Aydan önce çakolaştı görüyorsunuz değil But, mi? The, <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know. There are 70 people in the room. If okay. we all want to say something, we will never be able to finish it. So unless you as the speaker want them to say something, please mute yourselves, listen. If you have a burning desire to say something, <laughs> use the <laughs> chat box, write it. Uh, please Mute yourselves, guys. Please. Chako, bravo, Aydan hocam. Chako, chak. Aydan hocam, tamam, doğru diyorsunuz, evet. Okay, let me continue. These are all forms of judgment. Threats. Uh, now go back into your early days of teaching. Did you threaten your students? I have a colleague, Adem. Buradaysan Adem. Uh, put your L on your vision, derim ben. And Adem likes it very much. Put your L on your vision. How many times have you threatened the students? If you don't do this, I will blah, blah, blah. So these are all kinds of Chako language. So let's see. You talk too much. Do you use that expression? Sometimes. Yes. Okay, so how can we turn it into a uh, compassionate communication is what we um, want to do. But let's see more examples first. I'm getting sick and tired of the noise in this room. Every day I remind you of the classroom rooms, yet every day you do the same thing. Get out, shut up. Kes sesini, gebertirim. Konuşmaktan bir şey yapmıyorsunuz. Sınavda göreceğim sizi. I uh, did a small scale research uh, for this presentation and I talked about the 20 colleagues and I said, do you remember some of the sentences uttered by your teachers? And most of them said, kes sesini. And sınavda görürüm, göreceğim ben sizi. And also, some uh, sentences that came from my students, students who are in their third year, so they're quite young, their teachers use stuff like this. Komik bir şey varsa biz de gülelim. Siz kendinizi ne sanıyorsunuz? Ben dersimi anlatır giderim, olan size olur, disipline veririm sizi. If you've forgotten your books or notebooks, what do you say? Kendini de unutsaydın, şaşkulov. Defter yok, kitap yok, gezmeye mi geldin? Laftan anlamıyor musunuz siz? Zevzeklik etme, salak herif. This was uh, also told to me by my student and a history, her history teacher used it. Zevzeklik etme, salak herif. Now, in private schools, are you allowed to use uh, statements of such hurtful communication, Chaco language? Not really. Parents might destroy you, yeah? I think teachers are uh, more free to use Chaco language in, in um, whoops, okay. So this is a, a excellent piece of advice. Speak when you are angry and you will make the best speech you will ever regret. Yeah, and we do that. We, we do speak after, we do regret after we have spoken angrily. Okay, so what about Zarife? What kind of communication patterns does she use? Well, she communicates by listening without any judgment, without saying you're stupid, that's silly. And another thing that Choco doesn't do is that she listens for the feelings and needs of the other person. Because uh, behind every act of communication, there is an unexpressed feeling and an unexpressed need. So 
It's like the tip of the iceberg. When you do hurtful communication, you are just expressing your anger with judgments. But if you go deeper, you can explore those feelings and needs of the other person. And also not of the other person, of yourself as well. Remembering what Rosenberg said, being aware, uh, alive. If you want to, to be able to say what you feel and what you need, you're alive. And she does that in a four-step process and a four-step procedure. Now, this four-step procedure is not locked in stone. You can change some parts of it, but uh, the, the framework is there. And we're gonna look at it right now. So the first thing is to describe the situation. When you say you talk too much, is that a description of a situation? I don't think so. How can you say it? How can you turn it into an observation? When you do this, do that. Okay. What about talking too much? What can it refer to? What do you have in your mind? What does talking too much, uh, how can we observe talking too much? What does it mean talking too much? Maybe during group work? Possibly, or when, I, in a few minutes, I will reveal another example, uh, talking to uh, his desk mate during uh, listening, listening to a song. So you put a when clause there. That is the language pattern. When you do blah, blah, blah, that. That is the observation, the first thing. And the second thing is you express your feelings. That's what that if it does she like okay fine okay okay i know you love me her feelings with i feel as simple as that i feel in the english language i feel is uh, similar to i am so if you feel anger i feel angry is possible or i am angry is also possible so that's for the feelings and then the needs as uh, contrary to how we use need and want, we use I am needing instead of because I need. I am needing because I need and I want maybe uh, heard as threats. And the final is, final pro uh, step in the procedure is to make a request. So first we uh, describe a situation in non-judgmental words, we express our feelings we express our needs and we make a request. And we can make the request using, would you be willing to? We're gonna look at, ah, here is, uh, <clears throat> sorry. Here is Zarife giving a piece of advice to Chako. Chako, when you are busy judging people, you have no time to love them because you have all those uh, negative feelings in your heart. You're not feeling compassion to in this communication. Okay, let's look at the steps in greater detail. Making an observation. Aydan hocam chatı ben görebilir miyim aynı zamanda hem chat hem şey? You should have your uh, chat box somewhere, either below your screen or uh, about the screen so above please, the screen i see uh, but i have participants uh, there must be a chat uh, a kind of a speech bubble it should be symbol. there um i'm not able to see it uh it's just next to the share screen button participants um, just next to participants I, three dots and written more. Your voice is you coming and going. It. I am. I can't hear you. More option. You should have more. I know, Jim. Oh, just, just next to participants, oh. there is more. Click on okay. it, and there is chat box. You can participants. Next to participants, I can only see invite. 
It only says invite. Uh, uh, more. There is more here, chat. Okay. Yippee. Yes. I found it. Thank you for your help, Mr. Joe. Thank you, Mom. It's very nice. To You're see welcome. You. Okay. So you talk too much. How can we turn that into an observation? I mentioned this um, example a few minutes ago. When you talk with your desk mates while we're listening to a song, does that describe a situation? It does. It is very context specific. Okay, let's have another look. You are aggressive. Uh, these, the context for this talk is teaching, but you can uh, always adapt these sentences, the language patterns, Choco language patterns to your personal life. Maybe you are aggressive is something that we use with our spouses, maybe. You are aggressive. Aslı sen kullanıyorsun bir kesin bak biliyorum. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. So what can we say instead of that to uh, to make the observation? You're talking to a student and if it's a, a primary school student, maybe uh, you hit your friend when she snatched your eraser. Is that an observation? Okay, when you become aggressive while we're talking, when you become aggressive, um, aggressive is the judgment here. So when you are changing it, I'm looking at the chat box now, uh, when you are changing it, you stay away from aggressive because aggressive is supposed to show feeling and we haven't yet come to the feeling part yet. That's the second step. In the first step, we are supposed to show, we are just supposed to describe the situation. And aggressive does not describe the situation. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, I went back. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, you are a poor student. Like I said at the very beginning, it's a silly question when Nihan asked her question. What are the, Nihan, thank you very much for contributing in my role play. She accepted to do that. Okay, she's a poor student. Uh, or you are a poor student. How can we make that into, turn that into an observation? You haven't scored higher than blah, blah, blah in the last two exams. So uh, I, I hope I'm making myself clear in uh, the language that needs to be used in making an observation. So I can stop at this point and take your questions if you would like. Okay, no questions, we continue. So that was for making an observation. What was the second step? What was the second step? Everyone is mute. Okay, well, right. Um, how about this? You lied to me about your grades. Can everyone think for a minute, please? How can we change that into, a, into an observation? Okay. Okay, very good. I see that your grades are other than you told me. Yeah, very good. I feel hurt when you don't tell the truth about your grades. Okay. Um, here, I felt very unhappy about it. Okay. But uh, it is an impersonal uh, pronoun, impersonal expression. So it may not be exactly a um, description of a situation. Okay, let me show you. How about this? I heard you say you passed all your courses, but
put this report card shows two Fs. Okay, I I love I love this one. I still love you even when you get jokes. <laughs> I love this one. Yes, I still love you even when you get lower grades. Now we haven't come to the uh, feeling part, so keep to the observation part. Okay, I mean description of the situation. Now we can have a look at identifying feelings. We we may think that we are um we know what feelings are and we can express them, but it, it may not happen that way, and we might we may not have the right words for the feelings. So we need to clearly distinguish the expressions of actual feelings, because there are expressions that are not actual feelings, but people think they are feelings. Because they are thoughts, they are opinions, they are evaluations, and they are uh, interpretations. Let's see. I feel ignored. Is that uh, the statement of a feeling? Yes. I feel ignored. Is that? No. <laughs> because here you are judging another person. You are saying in a very covert way, you ignored me. So it is an interpretation of the action of others rather than a clear statement of how we are feeling. Remember, compassionate communication is not only telling others, but it's also telling about ourselves and being alive, as Rosenberg calls it. I feel lonely with the chat about film. Okay, it's an opinion, yes. Well, can you say this? When you don't greet me, you could be saying this to your husband, maybe, to your spouse, to your wife. Mamet, do you say that, darling, to your wife? When you don't greet me at the door, oh, I feel lonely. <laughs> okay, I'm sure Moja Mamet is Joab Barsin. Mamet, Joab Berefilisi. I always call her. Uh, Your voice is breaking up. Come on, take it. You Thank you very much. Okay. I feel that you should behave better. Is that an expression of feeling? No, no. Okay. Why? Why not? Judgment. Yes, Mamet, you have, yes, with your mic. Okay. This can create anger. Yes, okay. But you are directly judging the person. This is directly a judgment. No observation has been made and no feeling has been expressed. So how can we express it in compassionate communication language, in Zarife language? It's a thought, first of all, okay. I feel frustrated is your feeling. And if you want to describe the situation as well, I feel anxious when you say that blah, blah, blah, whatever it is, because anxious is a feeling, yeah? Chat Yes, better doesn't describe Okay. Yes. Good. Yeah. I agree. Okay. I feel you are annoying me on purpose. Does that express feelings? <laughs> Thank you, Siba. <laughs> it's an attack. Okay. Yes. Uh, again, here. Uh, when you use a chuckle language, 
what is happening is frequently you are putting the blame on the other person. And when you put the blame on the other person, you are denying responsibility. You're passing directly the responsibility onto the other person. I have, I have nothing uh, to do with this. It's not my fault. It's the other person's fault. Um, and Rosenberg talks about um, one of the Nazi generals being interviewed. And when they used uh, harsh words, or they had to issue orders to go to the camps. Uh, the, he was asked if he felt any um, remorse. And, and it, a very interesting answer came. He said, no, because we had a certain language for it. We were automatically using that language. And Rosenberg asked, what was that automatic language? It was bureaucratic language. Armsprachen, he says, I think from German. And uh, because it was automatic, we had no responsibility in it. We have to was the key word. Can you imagine sending all these people to their deaths and not feeling anything? Okay, so back to the um, sentence. Okay, I feel upset because I think you are annoying me on purpose. That is kind of a feeling. Now, we, we need to be beware of pseudo feelings, which I was mentioning earlier. These are not really feelings. So let's have a look at them. There's so many of them that you would think go under um, feelings. Oops, sorry. Okay, have a look at them. And I would like you to think how much of these expressions you used, maybe innocently in the past, and how much you are using now, or are you using any of these now? Abandoned, abused, attacked, betrayed, cheated. I'm gonna jump up as soon as I'll do. I feel neglected. That sounds like a feeling statement but it isn't yeah so these are pseudo feelings and we need to be first aware of them because as i said these are examples of hurtful communication and in order to be able to understand hurtful communication we need to uh, compassionate communication we need to understand hurtful communication um in the past what did our uh, parents say when parents entrusted their children to their teachers, what did I say? I think it's the funniest thing I've ever heard. What does that mean? Do what you want with this child, okay? And also when um, I, I wouldn't normally complain about school to my parents, but when once I did, um, my father said, you know, if I hear you complaining about school, I will make an official complaint about you. Or in another uh, hurtful communication context, the father could say, I will beat you myself if I hear a uh, complaint. So that the um, philosophy is also evolving. Okay, and how would that child feel? The child would feel if you say abuse, tamam, that's hurtful communication again, and that's judgmental communication again. Okay, let's move on. Now, co uh, communi uh, compassionate communication is also communication with ourselves. We frequently undermine ourselves. We frequently criticize ourselves. And one example of the self-talk is I feel inadequate as a teacher. We've, we've been through this. We say this. Demi Chako, Chok says is the in fact, Samandu. Yay! That's a good sentence. I feel inadequate as a teacher. What can you say instead of this? How can you describe the situation? Put the feeling.
So in order not to assess your ability as a teacher and try to express your <clears throat> real feelings, you can say, I feel disappointed in myself as a teacher, but that's still vague. So let's go one more step. A lot of teachers don't feel very confident when they're teaching grammar um, uh, inductively. Yeah. Teaching grammar in a deductive way is quite, you know, done confidently. However, uh, in the new way, in the inductive way, contextual way, you might feel disappointed in yourself, with yourself when teaching grammar. So again, uh, this is compassionate communication with yourself. So what are the, um, I'm uh, emphasizing the feelings bit uh, more than the others because I feel, but this is very personal, I feel that feeling, the feeling part is quite important. And it makes a lot of difference when you are angry at a person and not angry at a person. Um, so these are the things that we can use as feeling uh, expressions. In order to use uh, some form of scared, these are the things that you can use to show that you are scared. Impatient, anguished, disturbed. You can find these in um, Rosenberg's book, Nonviolent Communication, a PDF of which is available online, I think. Um, and ashamed, embarrassed, guilty. And also you can use these for sad, for example, you can use hurt, sensitive. You can use any of these when you are expressing your feelings with students. Have you ever expressed your feelings with students? I mean, have you ever used sentences like, I feel hurt when, you, when I hear you uh, talking in the back of the classroom while we're listening to a song? Have you actually expressed yourself? It's a good point to think about. Dima. Helpless. You can also say that. Um, Rosenberg uh, uh, talks about a, uh, an experience of his. He walks into this class, university class, where everyone is engaged in a very lively conversation. Then when uh, he comes in, the conversation stops and the atmosphere in the room is not that warm. And he continues with the topic. And he says, well, I felt that I wasn't connecting to these people. And yet I continued to give them information. I didn't connect with them. And then he realizes what he's done, like 10 minutes through the lecture. He says, um, somebody says something and Rosenberg turns to him and says, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. I am very nervous, he says. He reveals his feelings. And then he connects with the audience, with his audience. So uh, acknowledging that you are vulnerable, that you are helpless is compassionate communication. It's not showing your weakness at all. So we, what are the other feelings that we, the feeling statements that we can use uh, when our needs are not fulfilled? Are fulfilled, sorry. So these are, some of the, the the adjectives that we can use interested intrigued curious amazed calm fulfilled happy joyous radiant and touched touched is probably the uh, one of the most frequent uh, expressions that we use thankful grateful glad okay so we finished looking at the needs of the feelings part. Now we're moving on to the needing part. And how are we going to use the Zarife language? Well, first of all, why do we need to do that? Because all human beings, no matter if they're students or their spouses or whatever, they all have the same needs. They want to be understood. They want to be loved. They want to be connected, respect. And coming back to what Rosenberg said about being alive, uh, when you have a beautiful conversation with a friend, how do you feel? 
you feel as if you're floating in the air, right? You feel at peace with yourself and you feel congruent with yourself. And that's, that means that you fulfilled your need. Again, when uh, we were talking about the feelings bit, um, we, we shouldn't confuse needs with what we think others should do. And again, like in describing a situation, if there is no reference to who or when, there's no specific reference about description, then it's very, very confusing and it's judgmental. So needs. This would be an entirely appropriate communi uh, compassionate communication exchange. I feel angry when you do that. Do that, they didn't trick you, you can fill that in because I'm wanting respect and I hear your words as an insult. I, I am wanting and I am needing are the structures that we use here. Because if we say I want, that might be a little, uh, that might be perceived as a threat or a demand. I want respect from you. Okay, let's come back to the student who was <coughs> creating havoc in the backside of the room during a song. Um, you can use this sentence. That would be a full, complete example. Uh, without the request, of course, we have fourth component. I'm sad that you're not participating in the activity because I was hoping we could talk about it together after the activity. Or how would you say it after, um, I was hoping. Can you fill in the rest after I was hoping? Chatabuni. Anyone? I'm curious to hear your thoughts. I don't know, Jam, is that a suggestion or are you saying to everyone? No, I would I would say to my student, if ah, okay. uh, there's no response, then mm. uh, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Mm. That's how I feel. Okay, that's good because I was hoping we could exchange ideas. That's great, Özgün, that's very good. I would be happy if you, I'm so excited to hear about, okay. Uh, so just stop there for a minute. I'm so excited to hear about your ideas. Your ideas might be a bit too general in the sense. How can we make it more specific? Your ideas about ne. Then you can complete the rest of the sentence. Okay. On this topic. Okay. And whatever the topic is, everyone understands what, what the topic is. Okay, good. Right. Uh, moving on, we've come to the last part. I don't know, Jam, how are we doing? Okay, we've got 20 minutes left. I think I will finish in like 10, 10, 15 minutes and leave time for questions. So the fourth one is requesting. How do we make requests? Çocuğum, götür şunu müdüre. Çabuk müdüre git. Çabuk bana bir şey getir. Can, could you? Okay, good. <gülüyor> yaylan, çok güzeldi bu. Yaylan, yaylan çocuğu. Bu çok güzel. Bunu da e, not edeyim bir yere. Would you please? Would you mind? Okay. Right. Let's see. Yes, and your request needs to be very... Hadi canım, <gülüyor> hadi yavrum. Şey çok güzel yaylan. Hadi canım da güzel olur. Hadi canım yaylan. Aslında uh, some of the chuckle words can be turned into zarife words. Ben birine çakal dediğim zaman aslında hoş, sempatik bir yanı da yani jackal in uh, Indian, native Indian culture is wisdom actually. 
Uh, so, mesela, I, if I say seni chako seni to a student, it could mean chako has become a little like zarife, and I like that character. Yeah, tone is important. Okay, of course. So, it needs to be spe uh, specific, clear. It's not heard as a demand. Yes? Okay. Can you put your books away? Can you please put <laughs> oh God, I'm ruining my script. Um, can you put your books away? Can you please put your books away? It sounds like a security officer kicking someone out of the building. Can you please vacate, vacate the building? Okay. So positive action language. And you can also ask for a reflection if you don't think the other person is connecting. Şimdi mesela, please do not shout in this room. It is a negative request. Hani e, okulların koridorlarında yazar ya, koşma! It's a negative request. And it is argued that the brain doesn't register the negative part. So instead you can say, walk. So is that a request? Please talk in a in a low voice in this room. Is that a request? Yes. And you can also use, could you? Bir dakika, chatte bir şey geçiyor. Some teachers, if you are kind, they lose their respect for the information and respect themselves by giving orders. Yes, but that's a very good point. Giving orders does not help anyone. When you do, when you give orders, you're being what? What are you being? You're being hurtful. And you're doing it, and yet after the communication, how do you feel when you give orders? Asında, the truth of the matter is that neither the student nor the teacher feels um, alive in themselves. Please use your low voice. Okay, that's me. Yeah, use your low voice. That's very good. I don't know, John. Okay. I want you to stop drinking. That's probably said to a spouse, to husband or wife. Um, it's a negative request again, so it won't work. So now this is going to seem like a long sentence to you. <laughs> I'm being a Gestapo rather than a teacher. <laughs> Sometimes we are. In fact, maybe it's better to say that um, Chaco and Zarife are not two different people, but two aspects of the same character, because it seems that we go in between Chaco and Zarife. Sometimes we are in our Chaco mood, and sometimes we are in our Zarife mood, I think. Okay, so um, here is the sentence. It seems like a long sentence, doesn't it? I want you to tell me what needs of yours are not met by drinking and to discuss with me other ways of meeting those needs. Bunu dediğiniz zaman karşı taraf şeye giriyor tabii. Travma yaşıyor. <laughs> Bu ne biçim dil? <laughs> okay, but this is the structure for compassionate communication. Okay, I would like is also an acceptable structure like you wrote, um, like can, could, please, but as I emphasized it a few minutes ago, uh, don't make it sound like a demand. I would like you to put your books on the shelves when you're finished with it. Okay? That would be like a demand or threat even. So in um, compassionate communication language patterns, would you be willing is a very compassionate structure. Would you be willing to put? Tabii bunu da söylediğinde karşı taraf travma yaşıyor. What kind of a language is this? Tanrım bu ne? Okay, again, more examples. If you use I would like, that's fine. As long as it doesn't sound like a threat. Show respect. Hmm, that's vague action. What are you referring to when you say respect? If you say this, if a mother says this to a child, respect in one what sense? In what way?
Okay, coming back to the students creating noise in the background, you can say this, I'd like you to agree to stay silent while we are listening to a song. How does that sound? It's not normally something that we use, is it? I'd like you to agree. Or if a student enters without knocking on the door, you can say, would you agree to knock before you enter the class? Yeah? I think um, using the words uh, is as important as your attitude because that's where the feelings and needs come from. Very important. Okay. Um, also, you can check out these sources, Yanni. In one hour, uh, it's not possible for me to give all the aspects of uh, compassionate communication. Uh, so you can look at the videos by Rosenberg, and there are other people, not only for this topic, but uh, other people who take a topic and summarize it, making it very simple for other people. You have such videos as well. So you can, you can watch those videos also. There is a center for nonviolent communication. Um, I forgot to say, I use the word compassionate communication mainly because nonviolent communication has the word violent in it. So each time you say nonviolent communication, you are repeating the word violent. So for me, it's um, compassionate communication, but the center is called nonviolent communication. And in Turkish, it is called Şiddetsiz İletişim. And there's a trainer in Istanbul, which you can write to and videos are available. There's also another um, compassion, uh, something based on compassion. It's called compassion-focused therapy, CFT. It um, helps you to forgive people because when you don't forgive people and when you um, accumulate all the, the anger inside you, that eats you up. Uh, Rosenberg talks about one of his workshops in Rwanda. Uh, a woman was, uh, a woman saw her husband being killed, her three children being killed and um, her brother being killed. And she had to hide under the sink for 11 days. And this woman wrote to Rosenberg, not wanting to get rid of her anger, but what was the reason that she wrote, wrote to Rosenberg? Can you guess while I drink some water? She wanted to know how she can manage the entire village who was against her because she didn't hold any grudges. The whole village uh, organized themselves and that they wanted to fight these killers. And she said, no, I've forgiven them. That's a very interesting anecdote. Okay, uh, there are podcasts in Turkish which you can listen to. And uh, breathing helps anger very much. It helps you to control your anger. So Nefes Fe Yasham Akademi, so that's a great uh, source you can check out. Nefes, Nefesin Mujizander, that's why Shemsi Tebrizi. So to summarize, this is a complete example of Chaco communication. I've been too silent. You talk too much. Okay, Chaco, okay. Um, Ahmed, Zeynep, guys, you are so untidy. That's Choco language. This is very irritating. There should be more order in the room that we share in common. What are these? That's why I've put question marks. I want you to put your things on the bookshelves. Okay? So that's completely Choco conversation. Azarife communication. Ahmed Zainab, guys, when I see books and papers under the table describing the situation, I feel I am irritated because I am needing more order in the room so that, uh, that we share in common. 
would you be willing to put your books on the bookshelves? That's the entire format for um, compassionate communication. So in, in one, you have describing the situation. In two, you have the feeling. In third, you are uh, explaining the need. And in four, you are making a request. Now, earlier I said, if there, if you feel that you're not connecting when you are making this kind of these kinds of statements, you can always ask for a reflection. So you can say, I'm needing more order in the room that we share in common. Does that make sense to you? You can say stuff like that. Does that agree with you? You can uh, put in little uh, expressions here and there to make yourself uh, to, to be able to reflect on what you said as a result of that person's response. Okay, I'm going to finish off by a quote from Shems Tebrizi, who says, you learn by reading, but you understand by love. So if you have compassion in your heart, if you want to feel alive, you can do it. Thank you for your attention, everyone. Five thank minutes. you, thank you very much, Ben Aujam. It was really great. Uh, now, if you have any questions, uh, please raise your hands. Uh, will you be willing to raise your hand? Because Excellent. I Excellent. need some order in this room. <laughs> Yay, yeah. yay, yay, yes, uh, yes. Benaujan, before I start uh, reading uh, the questions or uh, uh, giving the uh, stage to or the screen to Thank the participants, you. there's one thing that I would like to ask you. Is this as difficult as learning a foreign language? Yes. <laughs> you didn't expect it, did you? <laughs> No, I, I was expecting that answer because this is, um, I know Tony hates the word unlearn, but this requires unlearning what we have learned so far and relearn a totally different language because automatically uh, words come out of my mouth. It's, it's not like, uh, how would you feel you know that kind of thing is <laughs> so unnatural I don't know, John, uh, if i may interrupt sure, uh, rosenberg says the only way is to practice practice practice let me add something to that the brain likes familiarity mm -hmm. uh, the reason why we respond with judgments or when we are in our chuckle mood is that those are familiar we have learned it over the years. And I said, we've learned it at home. We've learned it from our parents. Our parents who say, we talked about this. That is familiar. So in order for a new behavior uh, to work, you need to make it familiar to the brain. Mm -hmm. And that familiarity comes from practice. It's like with dieting, for example, when the dietitians give all those uh, new um, combinations of eating. They're entirely new. Uh, when I tried dieting years ago, I thought I was going to die because I love um, say, olive oil and I love butter, but there was no butter, no olive oil in any of the foods for like four weeks. And I thought I was going to die. I was very unhappy, very, very unhappy. But if I had continued to do that, it might have become familiar if I wanted it to become familiar. So yes to your question, but you can through practice, practice, practice. Okay. Uh, yes, my dear colleagues. Uh, Fatma Hojam uh, has written a great statement here. Would you like to say it out loud, Fatma Hojam? Okay, why not? Go ahead, please. Okay. Uh, I'd like to ask, uh, as far as I understand, as a result, um, Choco is general. 
great, what I understood. And uh, Zarife is more kind and uh, specific. And uh, yeah, I want specific. And also, um, Zarife is kind to herself, Fatma. Because kind. when you express your feelings, you are being alive. You are being true to yourself. So it's not şöyle bir şey değil. Yani polyanacılık değil bu. I took iyisin çok hoşsun bilmem ne gibi bir şey değil. It's also being true to who you are, being able to express yourself. And also maybe I use the, these uh, for the purposes of this presentation, but as I also mentioned it, I think we go in between. We have our chuckle moments and we have our zarife moments. So can we uh, say that uh, being more specific uh, when you want to convey the uh, message that you want to get the result of, uh, you must be specific and give the feeling in a specific way, uh, express your request in a specific way, uh, if you want to change that behavior. Can I say this? Absolutely. You summarize it really well. Probably better than I did. <laughs> <laughs> and also, reflection is also important. And when you think, as I said, if you think you're not connecting, if you're not, if you think you're not using the right words, or maybe the other person doesn't register that, doesn't want to register that, you can ask questions in between as reflection. Like in counseling, you mean, you know, in counseling, what do we do? You mean blah, blah, blah. You reflect back to the person, what you think you hear that person saying. Thank you. That was, yes, a well, a good summary. Anil Hoca also has a, a very nice remark here. Anil Hoca, would you like to say it? Okay. Um, before that, I missed Özgün's... Um... Anil Hoca suggests uh, Kristen Neff right. for self-compassion. Okay. Okay, self-compassion would be great. Start for individuals to practice compassion. Yes, mm -hmm. because we, we we talk to ourselves as well. Our self-talk is also may also be hurtful. Shab shal gene yaptın ya. Allahım ya Rabbi, aynı atay. Ya ne salakça bir soru sordun. You know we keep we do this, don't we? I do that a lot, and I Me hate. Too. My I mean, I think everyone does. Nihal well, Hocam has a uh, very nice uh, question. Nihal hmm. Hocam, would you like to say it? Nihal Hocam. Um, mm, hello, Hocam. Hello. <laughs> uh, I, I found it very useful, Hocam. Thank you for this uh, yeah, fruitful uh, presentation. Uh, I found it so useful, especially for peers' relations as well. Maybe we can teach this classroom language to our students so that they can understand how to behave to each other. Because uh, maybe they learn this communication in a different way in their family, uh, maybe in their own culture. Uh, yeah. So yeah. maybe we can contribute to our students in this way as well. Excellent uh, uh, say, uh, comment. And it is like, you know, uh, Nihan and I have done strategy training, like strategy training, <coughs> this could be training for communication because we are not trained in communication. We're just um, trained to say the first thing that comes to our mind. And that's the easiest thing to do. Mm -hmm. The reason why such kind of language seems difficult is because we're not used to it. We're familiar with the easiest, but the easiest is the most destructive, actually, the most dangerous. Yeah, excellent um, point. Uh, uh, I remember during my internship at the fourth grade, uh, during my bachelor, uh, we were going to a practice school and the uh, the teacher there were treating, uh, was treating uh, to her students so badly, yelling at them and uh, all the time, uh, you know, saying bad words. And after, during the break was treating us, all these pre-service pre teachers kindly. And we were so surprised. And when we really? asked this teacher, why you are treating your own students in this way? They are so young, very young learners. And uh, she all the time said that, you will understand me when you become a teacher. They understand this language. Otherwise they don't show respect to you. And 
uh, you know, imagine us, we are <laughs> so hopeful. And um, so we want to be so inspiring to our young learners, but mm -hmm. um, it seems so harsh to us and we felt us very badly there. And so uh, we, we decided there all together with my pre-service teachers, we don't want to become such a teacher in the future. So oh, your- yeah. um, I say something, um, yeah. Presentation uh, yes. uh, healed me now. I felt Wait. myself better. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, now, thank you jump. very much. Uh, well, there, there is one uh, other uh, question <laughs> here. Uh, Shebnam Hoja has written a, question, uh, a request here. Uh, she would like to ask something. Then Nazan Hoja, if it's okay with you, then I will give the screen to you, okay? And also, Aydan Hoja, there is... Bu şey miydi, Fatma mıydı? Communication. Yes. Okay. We've responded to that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes. There is also Mehmet's uh, remark, but I'm not going to read that. Mehmet, stop being crazy. <laughs> <laughs> what has he said? Where he is says, he? He says, I'm a We are men. We can't express our feelings. Come oh. on, Mehmet. <laughs> Come, oh. on. <laughs> Come on. Okay. So, Shebnam Ojam, first you go, please. Then Nazan Ojam will go. Hi, Aishigun. Thank you. Uh, uh, to tell, uh, thank you first of all, Bena Hocam. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, as I am from Black Sea, like you, uh, <laughs> I am the mixture of Zarif and Chako, to tell the truth. <laughs> I, mean, uh, I think we all the... are, Shibna. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, people, uh, I, I want to say it's a few sentences and ask only one question to you. People uh, don't have to love me, but they have to respect me. So, um, have, you, have you ever kicked out any of your students from your class? Of course I have. Yes. <laughs> of course I have. <laughs> I wasn't born like this. And there wasn't another person in my uh, environment to tell me about these communications. I also use, because I am an NLP trainer, I also use mm. or blend uh, stuff from other models. There is a Milton model, for example. Um, there's another model and you can ask certain questions. Yani, compassion communication is not the only model. So uh, by all means, there are so many techniques. And the question, the answer to your question, yes, I have, of course. But okay. then I learned that uh, she can be very can mean. That. I know Benal Hoja. Sorry? She can be very mean. Benal Hoja. <laughs> we are all scared of her. Believe me, Shebna Hoja. <laughs> That's why we treat her very kindly. <laughs> No, uh -huh. of course not. I'm just kidding here. Uh, but that's a very good question because um, every now and then we need to sit down and think about all the things that we have done and maybe, uh, if possible, learn from all those uh, actions, not to repeat them at least. Nazo Nojam, yes, it's your turn now. Oh, okay, I would like to comment on my own personal uh, experience. Uh, when I first graduated, that was about 34 years ago. Ooh. And that was the first sentence they all said to me, you know, when you treat your students very nicely, they will not respect you. Mm. That was the thing that I heard in Turkey. Mm. But I didn't believe any of those teachers. <laughs> I kept on respecting my students, being myself, being open, uh, setting rules in the classroom and being uh, being very nice towards my students, respecting them. And when I started doing it like that, they respected me automatically. It's not, respect is not something that you can ask for, <laughs> I think, you know? I Treat think you have to earn it. Well, you have to earn the respect. And if you, uh, if you make sure that your students love you, like you, uh, understand that you're doing the right thing in the classroom, they will respect you automatically. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is what I have done all those years. Mm -hmm. And uh, they can, then you can use Chaco language or Zarifi language. It doesn't matter what language you use. They will, they will appreciate you. They will appreciate if, what you Chaco do in language, the classroom. 
let's uh, try but to in stay a different away from Czech language. In a different way, Czech language, in a different way, for in example. In a nice way, in a kind way. In a way, nice okay. way. Ya salak mısın oğlum? Something like that, you know? Yeah, I mean, I say that. Çakolaştın yine, çakolaştın yine. Like that, you know, like that. But respect and understanding mutual, that goes mutually, I think. This is what I feel in my life. Thank you, thank you the point. Nazan, for being who you are. A big round of applause to Nazan. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you for being who you are. Ben Adjim, thank you very much for this session, really. And we need to focus on our language. I agree with you totally, of course. And it makes a huge difference in the classroom. Mm -hmm. As long as we respect our students, as long as we do what we need to do in the classroom, as long as we appreciate them, mm -hmm. they will appreciate Absolutely. it automatically. Absolutely. I totally agree Thank with you. you. Thank could, you. Couldn't, well, couldn't yeah. agree with you more, really. <laughs> Uh, <gülüyor> Thank you, Ayhan Hocam. <gülüyor> yeah. Um, uh, Özlem Kaya Hocam uh, has a question. Özlem Hocam, uh, if Bena Hocam, you're not too tired? No, no, I'm not. I'm okay, not. okay. Özlem Hocam, uh, please ask your question. Thank you, Hocam, and thank you very much. It's so nice to see you all, to hear you all. And I'd like to say I'm a, a new by teacher, actually. I've been teaching for two years and one and a half year, actually. And I know you from all of my teachers, of course. You are the teachers of my teachers. <laughs> and uh, it might be seem easy sometimes, but nowadays in online teaching, it's so hard to pick what's right to say when you ask the students to do something like mm -hmm. uh, answering a question or reading something. Mm -hmm. And when you choose a wrong way to say it, like, I don't know, telling them just twice, it's possible that you won't be see that student again on the next lesson, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And especially in first time meetings, what are the best ways to balance these situations to first, I don't know, approach with. Um, in, in terms of language, if you're asking about language, um, if you use, uh, you remember the quote that I showed, people may hear your words, but they can feel mm -hmm. your attitude. So uh, you might not be, you think you may not be using the right words, but they will feel your attitude. And coming back to what we said about Choco, if you say it like that, then the student won't be offended. He won't take it as a judgment. I tell students who don't uh, turn on their cameras, I ask them, Yavrucum, Chojum, are you having breakfast? Chabuk bitir, turn on your camera. Yani, it's the attitude it's that the attitude. makes a difference. Thank you very much, Ajahn. Thank You're welcome. You. Or sometimes I say, I want to see your handsome face. Ah, excellent idea. Oh, yeah, you're so yes. handsome. Come on, show me your face. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, just a quick warning. Nowadays, uh, you need to be very careful, especially yeah. with the opposite sex. Uh, well, even with the same sex. Uh, do we uh, continuously warn teachers not to uh, say anything related to the physical appearance mm. of the student uh, such as beautiful, handsome, yeah. uh, because uh, things have changed, guys. It was once very, <laughs> very innocent, innocent, very innocent. And Not anymore. Any, anything coming from the teacher, students would uh, take them as compliments. They yeah. wouldn't really feel uh, disturbed uh, with those words. But nowadays, please... Be very careful. Do not offend your students or do not compliment on them a lot. Like Ben Hocam said, maybe you need to compliment on the behavior of the student rather as, than the... As opposed to the character. Yes. Because when you yes. say you are a liar, you're directly uh, putting the blame or you're directly talking to the character of the person. Um, and also, the physical appearance, huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, any uh, Meleko Jam says, is it okay if we say, I missed? Well, 
Melia Kojam, uh, would you like to ask the question yourself? Go ahead, please. Well, I, I think it's written there. Okay, so, okay. Uh, Maybe she wanted yes, to say, yes, I say mean, it. Yes, yes, I mean, by all means. But if, humor, she, if she doesn't want to, Kojam, please answer the question then. Okay. I think humor is a great uh, technique in classroom management. I mean, I love using humor all in, you know, in my daily life as well. And you can say things, but I'm not suggesting sarcasm. I'm suggesting humor. There's a difference because it can easily move on towards sarcasm. Uh, that would be very nice. Yes, I missed you. Gül Cemalini özledim. That would be very good. Yeah. You can turn on your camera. But I also tell the students that there is a 20% attendance and absenteeism grade as well. That oh my, my God. Chuckle. That is my chuckle side. After having threatening, talked, threatening. Talked about... <laughs> <laughs> guess, guess, cut. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. And I believe they also miss each other. Yeah, I mean, yeah. friends miss each other. Uh, mm -hmm. According to the recent research, uh, students uh, miss their friends only, not the school, not the mm -hmm. teachers, but the friends <laughs> that they have. So uh, maybe uh, you can use uh, that as your joker card. You can mm -hmm. say, we all missed you. We have missed you. Mm -hmm. So is it okay if you turn your camera on and let us see your face? And also, um, I usually avoid why questions because asking why questions uh, puts the person on, on defensiveness automatically. Mm. So instead of saying, why don't you turn your camera on? You can say something different. And mist is a very good uh, language pattern here. So I, I always avoid the, the question why. Okay. Well, I guess we have learned this evening that we need to practice a lot to learn yeah. this language, mm -hmm. uh, to be respectful to others and to be respectful to ourselves. Yeah. Ben Aujam, thanks a million for this excellent, wonderful session. Uh, it's a, I don't know, uh, maybe a wake up call for most of us because we usually do not listen to ourselves when we talk. Now, from now on, at least I have decided to monitor myself more carefully. <laughs> yeah. So, thanks again. And You're most welcome. Time. It's been and, a pleasure. It's yes. been a pleasure. It's always a hope, pleasure to have you. And I hope you have had fun. That's yes. the most important thing, I yes. think. Yes. When you are you know, sharing ideas, I hope you've had fun. Yes, definitely. I, I hate boring lectures. No, no, it's not possible to get bored when you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, uh, I see hearts. Very nice. I did yes. take it. I see hearts everywhere. Uh, thank you very dear much. colleagues, thank you very much for uh, coming and participating this uh, session. Hope to see you next week in another one. Take care. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.